Hey everyone, so today is the last day for our spring break virtual art camp and I'm going to finish up the oil painting that I started yesterday. So I kind of switched directions with the way this was going because I started thinking about what could I teach that I don't normally get to teach in the art classroom and that some of my students might be interested in. So that's why I started with Procreate and then moved on to an acrylic underpainting. And now we're going over top with oil paint to finish off the painting. Um, if you're interested in oil paints but you don't want to invest a lot of money, I'm going to put a link in the description to buy water soluble oil paints. So it's a good way to get started without having to invest in a lot of mediums and thinners. With the water soluble oil paints, you can use water to thin your paints and also um, it comes with a water, water soluble thinner and you can use water and soap for cleanup. So it's a good way to get started without investing in a lot of thinners and mediums and um, supplies that you might not even end up liking oil paint. Um, it definitely takes some getting used to and I absolutely love it. Um, as you can tell from the videos. So I'll get started with showing you how to mix a few colors and then I'll start on the painting. So see you in a minute. Right now I'm going to mix my colors for the pine cone, the nest, and the beetle, which is a lot of browns and a lot of yellows. So I'm using the same palette I used yesterday because again this is oil paint so it takes a couple of days to dry. So my paints are still um, wet and I can use them. I'm going to add yellow ochre pale to my palette and burnt umber because I'm using a lot of browns and yellows. And instead of using blue to mix my black for the beetle and the pine cone, I'm going to use purple to keep that same palette going across the whole painting. So when you're doing a painting, you don't want to switch palettes halfway through. You want to carry over some of those same colors across the whole painting and that creates unity. And again, these are things that I've learned as a painter moving along. I did things, a lot of things wrong in high school and undergrad. And, you know, I grew as a painter and I learned new things and now I incorporate that into my painting. So that's what this is all about is learning and growing as an artist and as a painter. <clears throat> so I'm going to mix my black. So I take my ultramarine violet and my burnt umber and mix a darker value and this is going to serve as my black um, instead of using black out of the tube because again black can flatten um, your picture and with this I want to want it to have like a kind of a a cool color and be more interesting than just black so when you look at it it's just different that's turning out to look like a really dark brown which is interesting so I'm going to take a little bit off to the side and mix more purple and see how that goes so sometimes if you're mixing a color that is wrong, it's not coming out the way you want it to. I'll kind of scoop half that color off and pull it to the side and mix, try to mix the color that I need. That way you're not wasting a whole lot of paint. And I can use this brown here in the pine cone and in the nest, so I'm not going to throw it away. And I'm using a palette knife to mix this. You want to use a palette knife instead of a brush. What happens when you use a brush to mix your colors is that all that paint will get stuck in your bristles. And if it's the wrong color in there when you got to paint on your painting, of course that wrong color comes out on your painting. So you want to use a palette knife to mix colors and not brushes.
And if you don't have a palette knife, you can use a brush, but you want to make sure that you clean out your brush really well before you start painting with it. That way, all those different colors don't get mixed into your painting. So I think this is dark. This is the black that I'm going to use, is this one here. And I can still use these browns in my painting. I don't want to waste all that paint, so I just leave it there. And we'll use it while I'm painting. So the bird nest is made up of dried um, grass. So now I'm just going to mix a bunch of yellows, yellow browns. painting now I have a really pretty palette here I love all the colors um so you see that I have a variety of different yellows and browns in here that's because my nest has a lot of there's shadows in there there's highlights there's a lot of mid-tones um it's layered um so I wanted to make sure I have a wide variety of yellows and browns before I started painting and I wanted a lighter yellow than these two, but when I mixed it, I couldn't get the right mixture that I wanted, so I just kept mixing. And if I have a lot of paint left over um, at by the ends, I can just 
cover this with plastic wrap and it'll stay wet for a couple of more days um maybe like up to a week and i can use this in my other paintings so i don't just throw this paint away not with oil paint the good thing about oil paint watercolor gouache is that it lasts for a really long time when you mix colors so you can cover them or let them sit out like watercolors and gouache and then add water to it and you keep using it oil paint i'll usually put saran wrap over it and um a couple of days later i come back and i'm ready to start painting most of the time it's still wet and i can use it um so i can always use this extra paint in a painting in a different painting all right so now we are ready to start the fun part all right let's get started on painting with painting today i'm going to start just like i did with um yesterday and the day before with acrylic with starting with my shadows first and then building up my highlights with the shadows you can get them really really dark and if you need to lighten up you can always um, lighten them up highlights are usually done last and if you've ever seen paintings in real life you can't always see that in books but highlights are usually really thick impasto paint that's applied at the end and that ensures that the highlight stays um, true and that um, it'll pop off the painting a little bit more and I didn't understand that until I started looking at paintings in real life so my highlights will be the last thing that I do so again I'm working with shadows um, darker values then my midtones and then my highlights will be at the very end so I figured I would explain that to you before I started painting and then um, I'm just going to paint and let you follow along. So here we go.
think I am done for now. Um, when this dries, I might go back in here and work some of these values a little bit more in the nest. I don't like like these really light highlights and feel like I need some more mid-tones in here. But um, since the paint is wet, it, it would be better if I let it dry and then go back in there and add some more mid-tones to the nest. So I'm going to stop here and if I do go back into it, I'll make another video and show you um, what I do and how I continue it. But for now, I think it's finished and I'll take a break from it for a couple of days and, you know, maybe turn it around on the easel or put it in a pizza box to let it dry so dust or anything doesn't get in it and then take it out in a couple of days and see how... I think it looks then and whether or not I decide whether it's finished or not. Um, sometimes it helps to take a break from your paintings for a couple of days and then look at it again. And if you're happy with it, you can sign it and date it and call it finished. All right. So I hope you've enjoyed watching me paint this. Um, I've learned a lot about video editing and painting, you know, while I'm working on this. So if you have any questions, feel free to email me or leave comments below. Have a great day and a good weekend. Bye.